Alrighty folks, I'd like to welcome you all back to another video from Yates Computers Tips and Reviews. Well, this is going to be the toughest category, the toughest subject, toughest thing to go through. Because you can do this stuff on the simple, or you can do this stuff as an advanced, as a professional, as an installer. And it comes down to a, something as simple as this, a network cable. This is not as simple as most people do think this is. There are so many varieties, so many types, so many standards of this that you really kind of want to watch out for. There's a lot of things that you need to know, a lot of things you don't really need to know. That's not true. Pretty much everything in this you really need to know. Because almost all of these will suit home use. And I state almost. There's one I do not recommend ever really buying. There is an exception to this that I'm looking into. Is your flat network cable. Flat network cable was designed to be run under carpetings, behind baseboards and other things. But the problem is, is this cable is designed this way, round like this, for a reason. Lots of reasons. Due to the crosstalk, due to communication due to a lot of other factors this cable is designed that way that's what a standard is it's how these lines are done on the inside everything that's done on the inside well and on the outside because part of the standard is the sheathing the outside the plastic here so there's a lot of variables right now as of 2021 you have Cat5e, you have Cat6, you have Cat7, you have Cat8 pending, it's pretty much out there. Um, one you probably don't hear a lot of is you have Cat3. Cat3 is still out there, Cat3 is still used today. Cat3 is not a network cable. I want to specify that. It's not for data. It's not for networking. That is used for phone. Your home phone, analog phone. Now, as I state, analog phone. Not a whole lot of people have an analog phone anymore. They're all going to digital phones. So, I don't recommend you using a Cat3 product. You put that Cat3 product in and you go to a digital phone, odds are it's going to work. It's not going to work too great. You can have a lot of interference, a lot of crosstalk, a lot of other things. While you could go out and buy a Cat5, Cat6 line, run that, <coughs> and have no issues. Yeah, it's a little bit more money. But, that Cat3 line can never really be used for anything else other than what your original purchase was. If you put in a Cat5e or a Cat6 in, and you decide later on you want to go digital, let's say you end up putting a computer in that room and you want a phone, guess what? That's all run off of a switch and run off of certain things that you can do. You can use that same line for multiple purposes. It's for future proofing. It's to have that line when you put it in to know you can use it in the future for all your upcoming things. So this is going to be a multiple, multiple episodes because there are a lot of variables just like that. So. That's the one thing I wanted to press on this so I can get that out of the way and move on to the actual 
true networking cable lines. Most people probably buy them pre-done with the ends on like this pre-done all set ready to go there's nothing wrong with that except for I'd be careful who you buy them from and where you get them from number two know your color codes there are two color codes two I would say certified color codes I have noticed if you go online and you buy some of those cheaper lines from Asia or China or you know wherever they're coming from Mexico wherever they're coming from that they are not the proper color coding I've seen them where they're black in there there's all kinds of funky colors in them and I'm like wait this is a supposed to be a cat 5e rated cable and it's not even the proper colors when you buy your cable and you want to verify it you can actually still verify it where's that camera in there you can actually see the lines and the colors so you can verify that if you know the color code Plus, there's an A and B color code. The one they really have recommended for a long time is the B code. It seems to have the better rated. That's what they recommend for businesses and everything else. That's pretty much what the standard is today. But you can use A color code. Really? I've always used B, I've used some A, I've never had any issues, but the recommended is B. That's their best practice issue. You don't want to mix A and B on your, on your lines. You don't want to connect this to an A to a B. I don't recommend that. If you have to make a cross cable, one that has an A on one side and a B on the other, make a solid cable. I know it seems silly. People go, well, it's the same difference if you hook the two. To no, there's a, there's, you have your connector and you have your, your pins. You have areas where you can have crosstalk and you have other issues. I don't recommend that. You can do it. People have done it for a long time. I don't recommend it. But you can get away with it, especially at a home business, home small business type of environment. Bigger business, you really don't want to do that. You want to be the professional. You want to make your own cable to the length to what you want. So, these are some of the factors I wanted to bring up with cabling. Now, you get into Cat Six, Cat Seven, Cat Eight. I'll say half of Cat Six because the reason why I say half because cat 7 cat 8 is a shielded line I don't have any in front of me I will have to find some for my next videos on that to show you I know I have them I just can't find them I think I have them all in use right now um, so it's a little bit different shielding is more protection makes things a little better so I wanted to bring that up cat 6 actually has unshielded and shielded difference between cat 6 and cat 5e is there should be an inner liner between each pair of cabling that cuts down on your crosstalk but it makes your cable more firm makes it so it doesn't bend and flex so much secondary thing with cabling is you have two different kinds of cable you have solid cable that's usually riser cable 
other kinds of names for it. But inside those colors that I showed you, inside there, you can Google it, you can look it up. There's lots of diagrams, lots of other videos. Hopefully I'll get into more of that in another video of how it is. But the copper inside is a solid piece of copper. Patch cable is multiple pieces of copper inside there. Same with the electrical lines. If you know anything about electrical, you have copper line that is solid copper, and then you have a copper line that has multiple threads of copper in it, all in the same jacket. The red and black, or white, or green. They're either solid, or they're strands. That's basically the same as you got here. So, these are some of the little variables I wanted to bring up. Um, I will have multiple, multiple videos on this because just between that and that, and then you get into fire rating, you get into quantum, you get into riser cables, you get into all these things that are, sub, I consider, I call them, and everybody else you call them, they're a subcategory. Because you have your solid copper line that you're going to run in your wall, you need to know how that needs to be rated. So if it burns or catches on fire or you have a short in it or you're running a POE system where it shorts, goes back to what kind of cable you have. I want to point that out. And when I say it shorts, so here you have a Cat 5e. Remember I told you the difference between Cat 5e and 6 is the inner liner. The inner liner might help you with shorts keeps those lines off each other so wanted to point that out so same with seven shielded on and on and on and on so there's other variables out there so i wanted to do this little video to let everybody know that this is what's coming up there's probably a lot more coming up a lot more detail um so everybody's aware because you can go out and pre-buy these cables and you're perfectly fine but I want you to be aware of what the difference is because right now Cat 5e everybody's looking for this people have realized hey Cat 6 is out and it's shielded and it has an inner liner or it's this or that they're buying that the price is really high cable I have right now is a cat 7 people aren't buying it I actually bought that cat 7 lines cheaper than I can buy a cat 5e line just because of supply and demand so this is a factor you might want to consider if you're hooking switches and hubs together and they're close together and course you're gonna have power you're gonna have all these other things in this area with these switches and hubs that power these devices so you might want to consider using a shielded now if you look at cat 6 and it's eight dollars a cable and you look at cat 7 and it's four dollars a cable well that seems like a great deal to go for the higher and better cable so I wanted to touch on that shop around because odds are if you don't know a lot of this that I brought up you won't know more differences between the cat 6 and cat 7 the main difference is is the bandwidth speed how much data can go through this line cat 5 supports gigabit most people are not running gigabit you might be running it at home from your switch to your computer to a hard drive external hard drive not even that because the hard drive will not read that speed so there's a lot of variables there if you go into a cat 7 go into a cat 6 they support higher speeds 
So if you're into web graphics and you're designing and you have a server you're designing on and you have your computer communicating to that server, in the old days it used to be fiber optic or another connection you would need. Nowadays you can do that all through copper, this kind of networking cable. So hopefully everybody likes this little summary. Um, I'm probably going to break them up in the subjects because I wanted to do a brief overhaul of what this is. Because you may not care about this that much. If you have Cat5 or Cat5E Enhanced is not the same as Cat5E. Those are older standards. There's slight variables to this standard. So I wanted to point that out. You may want to, if it's just a simple cable between this and a switch that's, you know, six foot, whatever, buy a new one. You'll probably notice a huge difference. Um, I've noticed a huge difference between Cat6 and Cat5e. And that was just as simple as hooking it up to a PlayStation, to a Switch, doing connectivity tests. Cat5e was up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Every test, down, 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 and up, and then down, down. It was all over the board. Cat6, when I hooked that up, run that test, whoop, straight across the board, even numbers, same numbers, all the time. So, that's one of the factors. It's really, it shocked me to see how Cat5e is the big standard everybody's using and to see the huge variable roller coaster on connectivity, speeds, everything. When putting on a Cat6, same equipment, same switch, same everything, whoop, flat. Nice and even. No variable, no nothing. And I was very surprised. So, for Cat5e, I went out and bought Cat6. Right then and there. I ordered it. Because I could see the difference. So, that's something that you need to know. And if it's you going out making it yourself, and you're buying the box and you're running it and you're talking about a $20 difference or $30 difference between a thousand foot of Cat 5e and Cat 6 I would really consider going for Cat 6 even though you don't use that full bandwidth you don't use that full speed but to have that steadiness to have that reliability that was worth it to me so let me wrap this one up There'll be a lot more coming out here, so stay tuned, hit the bell, hit subscribe, let everybody know. Check out my channel. I've already gone through some of the basics on cabling, I believe. I already have a bunch on switches, routers, all this stuff already posted, available. So now, this is actually about the cables that you are going to use now between those switches, those routers that come down your wall, the difference between once it comes out of the wall and to your computer, those are two different kinds of line. Those two kinds of line that I told you, solid and the serrated multiple strand, the patch cable, you want that patch cable wherever you move that cable. It's more flexible. It bends more. It's made to be moved. So... Those are some of the key differences. All of this will be touched on a lot more in these future videos. Alrighty, folks, let me wrap this one up and I'll start some more for you.